When the Minnesota Fighting Vikings signed up UDFA defensive tackle Hercules Bad Mata Afa coming out of Washington State in 2018, everyone was fired up. Like, here we go. John Randall 2.0, reborn, undersized, underappreciated, unwanted stud. But then uh, towards ACL, uh, his rookie year, had a meh 2019. But we're still hopeful. We're still keep hope alive uh, that Hercules Mata Afa will start panning out in 2020. Time for him to be a hero. Hmm. So let's talk about him today. Background, you know the story. Uh, coming out of Washington State, 6'2", 254. That's right, a 250-pound defensive tackle coming into the league. Washington State, 2017 consensus All-American, uh, 2017 Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year uh, as well. 21 career sacks, 45 and a half uh, tackles for loss in 34 games. Was an absolute brute force monster for uh, Mike Leach's Cougars. Uh, Three-year starter on the D-line. Just an absolutely bat bleep insane Richard Jr. season. Ten and a half sacks, 22 and a half tackles for loss. Uh, And then he declared, and he went to draft it. But the question is, why? So you have all this insane production, uh, a guy that will put in the work and get after it. But, of course, the NFL being the NFL, he didn't check all the boxes for size and whatnot. All right, so short, he's light. He's whatever, but just all heart and hustle. I think the Vikings were very fortunate to snag him as a UDFA. Uh, went undrafted, uh, was, uh, like we said, undrafted, came in. Uh, rookie uh, OTA camp, unfortunately tore his ACL, so that put the kibosh on the 2018 season. Rehab came back 2019. Uh, the Vikings moved him around to defensive end, to the defensive tackle. Because remember, the plan last uh, preseason was that Jalen Holmes and Hercules Mata'afa were going to take that three-tech spot vacated by Sheldon Richardson and also some Shamar Stephan sprinkling there as well. Uh, he bulked up to 275. I'm thinking, here we go. I mean, 275, it's still a little light, uh, but he can certainly get after it. He, he can play on some third downs, uh, a couple NASCAR packages, just get in there, penetrate, get the passer, and, and do great things. Training camp or preseason, he was absolutely wrecking fools. He, he was looking really damn good, and we thought that, hey, number 51 uh, is going to be that future three-tech of the Vikings, uh, especially in that Saints preseason game. Uh, he had three pressures, a sack, two nice stops in the run game, and, and boom, here it is, three-tech of the future. And then... And then, no, 100 total snaps in 2019, and it was just odd. It was just odd. So Armand Watts not getting the time of day. They decided to roll with Shamar Stefan for a large part of that three-tech spot. So it was just, huh. It was very confusing, and even more maddeningly so when the Vikings were uh, bereft of getting an interior pass rush. So so much so that the, you saw a lot of uh, Fadio Denebo as well as Shamar Stefan being kicked inside, uh, passing down to sort of supplement that. But... It was tough. It was odd. And now, Hercules Mata off a year three. He's yoked up. He's jacked up to 289. So that's even better uh, for um, a defensive interior player. Uh, and there's still a power vacuum at three tech. Like the Vikings didn't necessarily address it in the draft. Shamar Stefan is still there. He's still whatever. I think he could potentially be uh, a salary cap casualty as the Vikings moved to the 53 man roster. Uh, Armand Watts, hopefully, is going to be getting more of the time of day. The second year former sixth round pick out of Arkansas. Jalen Holmes, year three, still, still waiting. And then Jalen. James Lynch from Baylor, uh, who they drafted, he was a defensive end in college, uh, could certainly kick on the inside, except he's a little bit untested there as well. So it's wide open. Yet again, it is still wide open. Also, with Fadio Denebo now looking to be a full-time defensive end starter, his usage on the inside is going to go way down. Shamar Stefan is, um, excuse me, Stephen Weatherly is also gone. Shamar Stefan still remains. So it is wide open. Like, there's very ample opportunity for Hercules Mata'afa to step up, be a hero, and just finally grab that brass, brass ring. Another year removed from that ACL, fully healthy. He's added size. He's added technique. He's added all these uh, various patchwork moves from, uh, from working with Andre Patterson. So let's go. Let's go. Is this it? Is this going to be it? Also, he's technically uh, in a contract year because UDFA signed three-year deals. He's going to be a restricted free agent in 2021. But even if they just original round tender him, that's still two and a half million bucks. So Herc, contract year, playing for his first decent payday in his NFL career. Plus, just absolutely getting after it. Just... It really is a joy just watching every single snap that Hercules plays. Hopefully that will translate into some playing time, some more opportunity, because I actually think that if he gets on the field regular season, I don't think he's going to give up that job, even given the immense amount of talent uh, on this roster at defensive tackle as well with Holmes and Armand Watts as well as James Lynch. But I'm rooting for Herc. One time, can we get it done? 
But your thoughts. Hercules Mata off year three. Is this it? Let's know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support the work? Pull some on the Venmo. But until next time, Skull, production value.